The Lions of Little Rock, chapters 23 to 24, pages 112 to 121. Chapter 23, The Rock Crusher. Betty Jean was waiting for me in the kitchen when I got home from school on Monday afternoon. Marley, we need to talk. Her arms were folded over the big red flower in the middle of her apron and she was flat, frowning. I sat at the table with a gulp. I knew what this was about. My time with a certain girl from Kansas. Have you told your parents you went to the gym this past weekend? I shook my head. Of course not. I didn't want to get in trouble. Betty Jean sighed. <sighs> then I'm afraid I'll have to mention it to them. No! She looked up, startled to hear me talking so loud. Truthfully, I was kind of surprised too. Betty Jean, please, if you tell, I'll be in big trouble. Marley, I know your father has some good liberal views, and I applaud him for that, but you can't be friends with that girl. I know, I said. Betty Jean sighed. I wish it was different, Marley. I really do. That girl's having a hard time of it and could use a friend like you. I made a mistake. I said, please don't tell. It can't happen again, Betty Jean said. I nodded. I felt like Pinocchio knowing I was going to meet Liz at the Rock Crush on Tuesday. I told myself, it's not a lie if you don't say anything. But even as I thought it, I knew it wasn't true. Guess I did fool Betty Jean, though, because she went over and cut me a piece of apple pie. Lucky for you, she said. I sometimes have a very bad memory. She handed me the pie. Thank you, I said. She nodded. Now don't make me regret it. On Tuesday afternoon, I had Daddy and Betty Jean in my head telling me what a naughty girl I was for being friendly. Still, I managed to ignore them both and wait in the little clearing in the woods, sitting on the very rock where Judy had banged my hand. Liz was late. I started to worry she wasn't going to come at all, so I did what I always did when I started to worry. I started to count. It was prime numbers at first, but somehow it changed into counting all the new people on my talking list. I'd added Miss Winthrop and Mr. Harding. Now that we were doing math together, sometimes I just, I said more than just numbers. Maybe I don't understand, or more often, oh, I get it. I'd spoken to Liz's mother on the phone, even if I was reading from cue cards and chatting with Tommy hadn't even made me sweat. For so long, I'd been the quiet girl. If I wasn't her anymore, who was I? Finally, said Liz, stepping into the clearing. I've been wandering around for 20 minutes trying to find you. She looked, talk, taking in the large stone I was sitting on. The ring of the trees, the path leading out into the woods. The grass was tall and turning brown, but a few wildflowers still poked their heads above the meadow. Sorry, I said. No, it's good, said Liz. It means other people won't be able to find us. She sat down on the rock next to me. So, Liz said. So... I said. We sat there in silence for a moment. How are things at school? Liz asked. The same, I said. JT asked you out yet? No. I remember what he called Liz. Even if he didn't ask me out now, I wasn't sure I would go. How are things at your school? Fine, said Liz. But there was a catch in her voice and a smile seemed just a little too tight. Really? I asked. No, Liz's face fell like a house of cards. Things are terrible. Everyone is still ignoring me. This morning in English, the teacher asked Janet to hand up books and she skipped me. I thought I was an accident, so I said I didn't get one. She looked me right in my face, so I knew she heard me, but she just kept on going down the row. That's awful. And when I walk down the hall, people move away to let me pass so I won't accidentally bump into them, like I'm a leper or something. They talk about me like I'm not there, too. At least, Shirley does. She's like Sally, only a hundred times worse. She's always saying stuff like, some people think they're so fancy they need to go to school with white folks. I'm so sorry. Liz shook her head. I know I make it worse. The world's build, the words build up and build up until I explode and I start screaming, I asked you a question. Why won't you respond? Don't you have any manners? And when I'm done, they the other just laugh and go back ignoring me. It's embarrassing. 
What does your mother say? I asked. My mother's so angry at me. She nearly made me go live with my aunt. She yelled at me for an hour when she heard about the gem until I convinced her I really didn't know you were coming. Besides, I know what I need to do. I need to learn to ignore them. How are you going to do that? Liz looked at me and grinned. You're going to teach me. Me? Of course, you're the best at being quiet. I'd always thought of being quiet as a negative, something that was wrong with me. Was it possible that Liz saw it as a strength? I know it won't solve anything, said Liz. They probably still won't talk to me. But if I stop yelling, at least I won't feel like such a fool. What do you say, Marley? Will you help me learn to keep my mouth shut? I nodded. Good, said Liz. I knew I could count on you. Now, I just had to figure out how to teach you something that came so naturally to me. Chapter 24, Halloween. All October, we didn't get around to silent lessons. It poured one week so Tommy didn't have baseball, and the next he got sick on the way to practice. I waited for an hour alone, worrying about how I was going to teach Liz to be quiet until I realized she wasn't coming, and then it was Halloween. Being almost 13, it was I was too old to go trick-or-treating, but being almost 13, I also really loved candy. So I volunteered to take the little girl from down the street. Jill was five years old and so shy she would never say a word. She was like a sip of water from a bathroom cup, and we got along great. On the 31st, I threw on a cowboy hat and picked Jill up around 7 p.m. By 8.30, she was so tired, I practically had to carry her home. I just dropped her off at her house and was on the way back to mine when I heard a whistle. Howdy, cowpoke! I turned and saw a cowgirl with a leather skirt, chaps, a fringe jacket, hat, and bandana over her face. Beside her stood a little kid dressed as a horse with a full mask over his head. Wow, I said. I recognized Liz's voice, even if I couldn't see her face. You look great. Granny can sew, she said. Too bad every day isn't Halloween. We could go anywhere we wanted. You're not supposed to talk to your white friend, said Tommy. Shh, said Liz. Horses don't talk. Besides, I told you I'd give you half my candy. Oh, yeah, said Tommy. Walk with us a bit, Liz asked me. A block or two would be okay. Mother and Daddy didn't expect me home quite yet. What are you doing here, I asked. We heard about the man who owns the Coca-Cola factory, said Liz. He gave out hot dogs and Cokes. They were good, said Tommy. And the lady on Taylor gives out the best candy apple, said Liz. I wouldn't know, said Tommy. You ate mine. Liz pulled his mane and they started squabbling. And I miss Judy and David so much. I could almost imagine they were there taking me trick-or-treating like they'd done when I was little. We turned a corner already to the, at the edge of the white neighborhood. I'd never really thought about how close we lived to the colored part of town. Go on home, said Liz to Tommy. I'll be there in a minute. Tommy ran off. I better be going too, I said. Want to try me again next Tuesday? Liz asked. Before I could answer, we heard a splat. We looked up. A tall boy with blonde hair was throwing eggs at a small white house on the corner. Miss Jefferson lives there, I said. The old lady with the white dog? With the little dog? Liz asked. I nodded. Splat, splat. Eggs oozed down the front window. Inside, the little dog began to bark. Stop it. Liz yelled, walking toward him. He took one glance at us and kept on throwing. When the first carton was empty, he reached into a bag to get another one. When he stood up with the new carton, I could see his perfectly straight nose in the street light. It was red. Liz, I hissed. I grabbed her arm and tried to pull her away, but she shook me off. She's an old lady, Liz yelled. She can't get up on a ladder and wash those eggs off. What a stupid mean... A second boy stepped out from behind a tree into the light. It was JT. Liz stopped talking. JT was holding a whole bag full of eggs. Marley, what are you doing here? I didn't answer. Is that Liz with you? Liz was standing still, frozen. At least her bandana was still in place. No, I squeaked. It is, said JT. I recognize her voice. 
You're still hanging out with that. I gave Liz a shove and finally turned and ran. JT, Red called out. You got those extra eggs? JT watched Liz run off and then gave me a funny book. Look, who is that? Red loomed over both JT and me in the darkness between the streetlights. It's Marley, said JT, my math tutor. Tutor? Yeah, right. The mute girl? Asked Red. And she was with that colored girl who used to go to our school. I shook my head furiously. It was Liz, insisted JT. I recognized her voice. Where's she now? Asked Red. Ran off, said JT and gestured into the darkness. Oh, Marley said red you shouldn't be hanging around with negroes he plucked the cowboy hat off my head and crushed it between his palms then red took an egg from a carton jt was holding and placed it in my hands i was shaking so much i could barely hold it throw it commanded red i shook my head throw it red barked i tried to throw it but it landed about a foot front in front of us a little yoke leaked onto red's shoe JT stared at it, but Red didn't seem to notice. He took another egg and shoved it into my hands. Hit the house. I shook my head. Even if I'd wanted to, I didn't have a good arm. Red took me by the shoulders and shoved me up the front walk until it was about a yard from the front house. Throw. I threw, but the egg still landed in the bushes. Idiot. Red roared and pressed another egg into my hands. So hard this time that it broke. I had egg all over my fingers. Red, JT asked, what are you doing? Gotta make sure she doesn't tell on us. Now, if she does, we can say she threw them too. The yoke was sticky on my hand. I wanted to wipe it off, but I didn't dare move. JT glanced at me again, then back at his older brother. She's not gonna tell. How do you know? Asked Red. She does my math homework for me, said JT. I know she doesn't want anyone to find out about that. Besides, she doesn't talk. I could feel Red's electric blue eyes boring into me. You know where that colored girl lives, he asked. I shook my head. Red picked up my flattened hat and shoved it back on my head. You make sure you stay quiet, he said, because if you don't, I'll be coming after you and your little friend, too. I nodded to show I understood. Come on, JT, he said. Let's go somewhere else. They started walking away. After a moment, Red turned back and keep on doing my brother's homework. I could hear them laughing as they wandered off. When they finally turned the corner and were out of sight, it was like a spell was broken. I ran and ran, and it wasn't until I reached our front porch that I realized I was crying. Marley, that you? Mother called out. Yes, Mother. I frantically wiped my eyes. I was going to be stuck doing math homework for JT forever. And if I confessed and tell my parents, they'd find out about Liz. I pulled myself together and opened the front door. I was splashing some water on my face when the phone rang. Hello? My voice was shaking. It's me, she said. You got home okay? I nodded. I can't hear you nod over the phone, said Liz. Yes, I said, but I didn't even smile. I had to give Tommy all my candy, but don't worry. My little brother knows how to keep a secret. I listened to my heart beating. Two, three, five, seven, eleven. I really need those quiet lessons, said Liz, and she sounded scared too. Next Tuesday? Okay. I hung up just as Mother walked into the kitchen. Marley, you're white as a sheet, said Mother. What's wrong? I wanted to tell her then. I wanted to go back to the old days when I sat in her lap and she read me stories and I told her everything but they were gone. I ate too much candy, I said finally. Mother nodded. Go to bed. You'll feel better in the morning. I crawled into bed and pulled the covers over my head. I miss Judy something awful. If she'd been there, I could have told her what happened. She'd have known what to do. I listened to the lions, but it still took me a long, long time to fall asleep.